from Microbe TV. This is Beyond the Noise, episode number 85, recorded on November 17th, 2025. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me today is your host, Dr. Paul Offit. Hi, Vincent. Hello, Paul. This is the video version of Paul's column over on Substack called Beyond the Noise, Cutting to the Chase on Important Health Topics. Today, we're going to talk about Paul's latest column called See No Evil. So you write at the outset in this column that RFK Jr. has limited the role of the CDC in monitoring foodborne outbreaks of infectious disease. So how, how would such monitoring normally work? So normally, whenever there's there's an outbreak, um, it's reported, reported locally, reported nationally, so everybody can know what's going on. What RFK Jr. has said is that he wants certain bacterial infections and the reporting of those infections to be optional, and, and spe specifying listeria, campylobacter, salmonella, and toxin-producing E. coli. And there was a reason that he did that. I think the reason that he did that is that he is a big promoter of unpasteurized milk. And that's when you have pasteurization. Those are the organisms that typically you're killing so that people don't get infected with them. And there are, are hundreds of people who have these infections every year and dozens of people who are hospitalized with these infections every year. So basically, it's this see no evil approach. If we don't report these, or we make the reporting optional, then we're not going to know about the harms caused by promoting unpasteurized milk. So normally the report, let's say there's an outbreak in Pennsylvania. I, I presume the state health department would report it, right? Right. And then they would tell the CDC. So so what is, actually is RFK saying? Is he going to tell the states not to report it or just CDC? So it's hard to know. He's just said <laughs> that the, the foodborne illness section of the CDC's reporting no longer has to include the reporting of these particular bacterial infections. So the CDC often does those um, analyses, often does the investigation. They're the ones who were sent into those areas to investigate what was the source of these listeria infections or campylobacter infections or salmonella infections. So they're the ones who often do the investigations. And I think, uh, and sometimes they're done at state or local health departments, but also the CDC is heavily involved in this. And now they're being told that, mm -hmm. that you don't have to uh, report this when it happens. So I don't understand this, Paul. He seems to be acknowledging that if you, if you drink raw milk, you're going to get salmonella or listeria or campy or toxin-producing E. coli, and he just wants to hide it? This doesn't make any sense. Ignore it. The same way that he basically ignores the measles outbreaks that we're having now, or the almost 300 children who have died of influenza this year, or the pertussis deaths in states that hadn't seen deaths in years. We don't hear anything from him about that. I mean, normally that would be a big deal. This is the biggest measles epidemic we've had in more than three decades, and you hear nothing about that. And, and specifically, when he went to West Texas during the beginning of this outbreak, when two children had died, six and eight-year-old children, he said we should focus less on measles and focus more on chronic diseases like autism or diabetes. That's always his mantra, is we need to focus on chronic diseases. And by extension, he means don't really pay attention to these infectious diseases. Um, it's really not a big deal. And I think that's how he sees these infections associated with unpasteurized milk. I was just in Toronto and uh, learned that Canada has lost its measles-free status. And uh, the U.S. will in January, I believe. I heard a, I went to a session on measles and I heard a, a talk by a scientist from Pakistan who said outright measles is not a trivial disease and vitamin A doesn't ameliorate disease in most people. I mean, it's just great just to hear this from other countries, you know, blatantly contradicting the, the falsehood of RFK Jr., Right. Measles, before there was a measles vaccine, which would cause 48,000 people, mostly children, to be hospitalized with pneumonia or dehydration or encephalitis. 500 children, primarily children, would die every year. There would be children who would have this chronic measles infection of the brain that was invariably fatal. It was rare, maybe one per 100,000 cases, but it was real. No, measles makes you sick and measles can make you dead. There's nothing trivial about measles at all. It's not just this rash that you get and get better from. Um, many people don't get better. Okay, back to milk. So listeria, salmonella, campy, toxin-producing, how do these get into milk? 
Right. So I think the 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 my um, I imagine the way that it happens is that the udders of the cow are actually fairly close in proximity to you know to where the uh, defecation of the cow occurs, and the people who milk those cows can inadvertently. Uh, have uh, transfer uh, those organisms from one site to the next. I think that's probably the main reason. So I know someone's going to come up with this question, so I'm going to ask you, and I know the answer, but I want you to say it. Mother's milk isn't pasteurized. Why is it okay? Well, maybe for the same reason. <laughs> the, the, the mother's milk is not in close association to right. the, the area where these bacteria typically live. Right. Breastfeeding is okay. It doesn't have to be pasteurized. Right? Yes, that's true. So a um, process called pasteurization removes these bacteria. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so pasteurization, which was first uh, introduced, not ironically, by Louis Pasteur in <laughs> the 1860s, um, he did it with, with beer and wine. But we started to do that in Chicago in the 1920s for milk. So we've been pasteurizing milk for more than 100 years. And um, it, it's basically you, you heat um, the milk for at 160 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 seconds and quickly cool it down. What that does is it kills bacteria. But it really doesn't, at least for the most part, doesn't uh, largely uh, um, denature proteins. So you still retain the bouquet, if you will, of milk. You still retain the, the, um, the nutrients in milk. So, so pasteurized milk is as nutritious as unpasteurized milk. It's just much safer. So why do people want to drink unpasteurized milk if it's as, as nutritious as pasteurized milk? Because they have the false concern that it's more nutritious or have the false notion that it's better tasting. I mean, really, the tastes are virtually identical. And the um, nutritional status for 13 major nutrients, including calcium and other proteins are, or, and proteins, are really virtually identical. So there is no advantage to drinking unpasteurized milk, just the major disadvantage of being one of the hundreds of people who would be infected by one of these bacteria or dozens who are hospitalized. And, you know, it's, it's not trivial. In addition to the fever and cramping and nausea and vomiting and diarrhea, toxin-producing E. coli produces, as you would imagine, a toxin, which can cause something called hemolytic uremic syndrome, which can result in renal failure and including, including fatal renal failure. I've seen uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome in my clinical days, and um, it's pretty devastating. Do you have any sense of the number of milk-associated infections that occur in the U.S. every year? So it's hundreds. It's sort of in the 700, mm -hmm. 800 realm, and then about two, three dozen hospitalizations a year. Now, Casey Means has been or will be nominated for Surgeon General, and apparently Dr. Means likes to uh, drink unpasteurized milk as well. Tell us about how she makes sure that her milk is safe. She believes that she can drink safe, unpasteurized milk if she develops a relationship with the farmer. So she goes and she talks to the farmer. She looks the farmer in the eye. She walks over to the cow, looks at the cow, pets the cow. And then when she feels comfortable, now she's she knows that she's going to be getting milk that's not going to contain these bacteria, which isn't true. I mean, the the, um, the clinically healthy animals can still have uh, contaminated milk. And um, there's no way to tell from looking at milk whether it's going to be uh, safe or not. That's why we pasteurize all of it. I, Paul, this is someone who may be nominated for Surgeon General who wants to look a farmer in the eye to figure out if milk is safe or not. So you don't think that's going to work? Right. I, it's, it's hard I, to watch. Well, it's, it's like saying, I feel that MMR should be split into three vaccines because I feel it. Not that there's any data, but I feel it. You know, it's the same kind of feely, touchy feely stuff, which doesn't substitute for science, as you know. No, it's it's this it's an anti science point of view. It's a, a quote unquote sort of back to nature point of view. Let's just go back to when things were more natural. And um, I think the word natural has a lot of uh, cachet, even though in this case it would be naturally infected by bacteria that could potentially kill you. I don't know where Dr. Means lives, but let's say someone in Manhattan, there are millions of people living in Manhattan, many, many millions. And let's say they all want to look a farmer in the eye. How is that going to work practically? I mean, this is the dumbest thing I have heard in a long time. But, you know, I've heard so many dumb things in the last six months. It's unbelievable. How would that work in Manhattan to go find a farmer? I think it's going to be hard, Vincent. You're just going to have to really work hard to do that. 
Now, there used to be a milk quality testing branch at the FDA, right? What, what did they do? Right. They did exactly that. They made sure that the milk was of high quality, high nutritious quality, and also that, you know, that we weren't uh, dealing with, with contaminated samples. And up to really a third of milk that is obtained from clinically healthy animals can have these bacteria in them. That's why uh, we pasteurize them all. So there is no predicting it by looking at the cow in the eye or shaking the farmer's hand or just looking at the milk grossly. Um, there's no way to do that. So that's why we pasteurize milk. And I think what, what RFK Jr. is doing is he's making it easier to sell, easier to consume unpasteurized milk because he just believes this is better. He believes it's more nutritious and Casey Means does as well. These are, these are two people who are leading America, making America healthy against movement. Uh, and in this case, this is only going to make us less healthy. So uh, RFK Jr. has eliminated this milk quality testing branch at FDA. Is that correct? That's right. So no longer will milk go to the FDA to be tested for safety. Uh, that's the way it appears. I guess you don't have to do that as long as you can look the farmer in the eye and pet the cow. <laughs> now, I presume states can still have their own regulation of milk, correct? I think so. That's right. And, and that, this is what is encouraging me in, to me in many ways. Is I, I do think a number, that a number of states do stand up for the health of uh, people in this country. I'm certainly watching Pennsylvania do that with Governor Shapiro stands up and forms his own, what he believes are, you know, best, uh, you know, best health practices in conjunction with experts and make sure that the children who are uninsured or underinsured in our state get the vaccines that they need. He'll form his own vaccine for children's program if he has to. So you're seeing people stand up against this, this administration when they issue guidelines uh, that make no sense. I don't know if this has been done, but I'm willing to bet if you mapped the number of um, milk-borne illnesses versus the state, I'll bet there'll be more in a red state versus a blue state. I think that's very likely. And, and when you see food-borne illnesses, uh, milk-related illnesses are often at the top of the list. Would it, as a pediatrician, Paul, would it be particularly harmful to give a baby unpasteurized milk? Yes, especially babies who are, are especially vulnerable to some of these bacteria. Absolutely. And uh, hopefully RFK Jr.'s and Casey Means' encouragement of this uh, and making it easier to, to buy, to sell and consume this won't lead to even more illnesses, but that would be the prediction. So tell me, Paul, at the end here, how is consuming unpasteurized milk, which can lead to not trivial infections, how is this making America healthy again? It's not. It's only taking a major step back in the same way that this attack on vaccines is making us less healthy. And arguably even other things, when RFK Jr. appears on uh, Sean Hannity's program on Fox News and says we need to move away from, from seed oils to beef tallow. So in other words, that we should move away from unsaturated fats to saturated fats, when saturated fats, in fact, are much more likely to increase low density lipoprotein cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, which only increases the risk of heart disease. So I don't understand that either. There's a lot of anti-science in the Make America Healthy Again movement. It's just being contrary because they don't believe in science any longer. And those who are um, making policy. We'll put a link to that column in the show notes. That's Beyond the Noise with Dr. Paul Offit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Vincent.